Economics is about almost everything we do. It's about money. It's about who is rich and who is poor. And it's about jobs, what people do for a living. Economics is also about the products we buy, the food we grow and eat, and the things we make. Economics is the science of how people use resources to satisfy their needs and wants. In this program, we will look at resources and see that how resources are used is one of the most important issues facing people all over the world. When Michael and his dad go shopping, there are many things they may buy. A CD player, boom box, a video game, perhaps a vacuum cleaner, or a TV set. All of these products used resources when they were made. Let's look at just one product, this wooden chair. Let's go back in the life of our chair and see what resources were used to make it. Here we see a person assembling our chair. The work he is doing is called labor. Physical labor is one kind of resource. Someone designed the chair. This is mental or intellectual labor. The tools he uses are another kind of resource, a capital resource. The wood that makes up the chair is the third kind of resource. But where does the wood come from? To answer this question, we must travel further back in time in the life of our chair. This is a sawmill. It makes lumber. Here again we find labor as people are needed to operate and supervise the equipment that cuts the logs into lumber. We find different tools such as this pick and machines such as the saw which slices the logs into boards called lumber. And we find buildings. These are all more resources being used. But we can go yet another step further back. We can discover where the logs that were made to lumber came from. These men are logging trees from the forest. The process of logging uses a large piece of equipment to cut the tree and remove the limbs. The trees, called timber, are the raw material that is transported to the sawmill for further processing. Labor is supplied by the people who operate the equipment. Another way of logging is to use a hand tool called a chainsaw. Both the large tree cutting machine and the chainsaw are capital resources. Trees are a natural resource, as is the land itself that the trees are grown on. This is the birthplace of our chair. So, there are three kinds of resources used in producing goods and services in general. They are natural resources, physical and mental labor, and capital resources. Let's look at these resources in more detail.
beginning with natural resources. Natural resources are gifts of nature. They are just there, like land itself. They include sources of energy, like oil and coal, and all the materials that are mined from the earth. Natural resources are divided into two categories, renewable and non-renewable. Trees or timber are renewable. After they have been harvested, new trees can be planted so that we may have a continuous supply of timber for making wood products. Wind is another natural resource that is renewable. Wool, used to make fabric, is another renewable resource. After the wool is sheared off the sheep, it grows back again. Oil, on the other hand, is not renewable. There is a limited amount of oil in the earth. And once it has been converted to gasoline and burned, it is gone forever. Labor is the next resource we will look at. Let's see what kind of labor it takes to run a large business. This is a Target store distribution center. Products arrive here from all over the world. These products are sorted and sent out again by trucks to the individual Target stores. Inside this facility, we find that there are people who load and unload trucks, physical labor. These people monitor the flow of the trucks. Some of the employees supervise the conveyor belts that move the products from place to place. Some drive forklifts, storing the products that aren't shipped out right away. Others run the computers, which keep track of the whole process. Here's a person that deals with finances to make sure that the operation is profitable. These are secretaries. And these women perform a mental labor. They are personnel directors. They make sure that people work well together. So we can see that there are many different kinds of labor, both mental and physical, in any large business. Capital Resources Capital resources can be just as diverse as labor. The capital resources we have seen at the Target Distribution Center are the buildings which house all the different aspects of the business, the equipment inside, such as the forklifts, conveyor belts, and computers. Here are a few other examples of capital resources. Now that we know the different kinds of resources, let's look at some of the facts about resources. The most important fact is that resources are limited. There are only so many trees. Land, which is abundant in most places, becomes scarce in a big city. That's why we have skyscrapers. Eventually, oil will all disappear. Pumpers will stand idle. Even labor is limited. A person can only work so many hours in a day, a week, or a lifetime. This means we have to decide how we will use resources. Economics involves choices and responsibility, since we cannot do or have everything we want. For instance, this farmer must choose what crop to grow. If he grows corn, 
he cannot grow wheat. One of the most interesting and important principles about learning how people use resources is called opportunity cost. Opportunity cost means that choosing to have more of one thing requires a decision to have less of another. Let's go back to our chair, for example, and look at some of the choices that were made along the way. Do we cut the trees? Or just leave the forest as it is? Do we make lumber from the logs? Or shall we use them for paper? Lumber? All right. But lumber can be used for many purposes. We could build a house, for instance. But let's say that we've decided on a chair. What kind of chair? Plain and simple? Or fancy and luxurious? But what influences the choices we make in using our natural resources? In many countries, like the United States, the market decides. If people want to buy wooden chairs, then trees will be used to make them. If they want metal and plastic chairs, then trees will be used for something else. If people were content to sit on the ground, then no resources would be used for chairs. Sometimes other values decide on how we use our resources. For example, environmental concerns. Many people feel that the forest must be preserved for wildlife or for the health of the planet. Another important fact to understand about resources is that they are not evenly distributed. Here is where the forests are today in North America. The next maps show the distribution of the energy resources, coal, natural gas, and oil. This map shows the distribution of the mineral resources, copper and iron ore. What about people, the labor resource? Notice that the heavy concentrations of labor are near another resource, water. So if you want to start a business and you need a lot of workers and tools, you would be wise to do it where many people live capital resources, buildings, and equipment are also concentrated in urban areas. The last concept regarding resources is the issue of who owns them. In most Western countries, there is a mixture of public and private ownership. With natural resources, sometimes the government owns the land, water, and forests. This means that all the citizens of the country own them collectively. Natural resources are also owned by private groups, as in the case of this coal mine, which is owned by a company. Sometimes an individual owns a natural resource, as in the case of a farmer owning the land he farms. The same is true of capital resources. Roads are owned by the government. Manufacturing plants and the equipment inside are owned by companies and tools are often owned by individuals. Labor is not owned. People work for wages, although at one time slavery was common. In some countries, like China, government owns most of the resources, natural and capital. They have what is called a a central rather than a free market economy. How people use resources efficiently or inefficiently, whether we depend on renewable or non-renewable resources, how we decide who owns resources, and what we use them for will decide the kind of life we have and what we leave for the future.